Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we're going to be discussing how to install the 6-axis screen set to support your 5th and 6th axis for Mach 3. Now, many of you already know Mach will support 5th and 6th axis machines, but under the default screen set, and I'm going to go into it right now under Mach 3 mil, you're going to see real quick that Mach under the default screen set only supports 4 axis. Um, but if you come over to Diagnostic tab, this is interesting, many of you may not even know this, the B and C axis, which are your fifth and sixth axis, are represented. But of course, it's not in a convenient location. We like as much information on our HUD, so to speak. I like just talking in aviation terms. But this is your program run screen. So again, it's the screen you'll be defaultly uh, locating once you actually enter mock. So doing that, it makes sense to have everything on this screen. Again, when you're running a fifth or sixth axis system, you definitely want to know where, where all your axis are for whatever operation you'll be doing. So that being said, we're going to close out of here. And now what we're going to do is come over to the internet browser and we're going to type in www.mocksupport.com. That'll bring you to Artsoft's site, which is the manufacturer of uh, Mach 3. And we're going to come over here to screen sets. Click on that. Once we click on the screen set tab, you're going to find that there's sets of instructions for each type of file that's allocated to a specific screen set. So if it's a .m3s file, these are the set of instructions you'll use. For a .zip file, these are the set of instructions to use. And for a .swf file, these are the set of instructions to use. Um, again, take your time, read carefully. In this particular instance, we'll be using a .zip file. Now, for those of you not familiar with the screen sets available for Mach 3, believe me, there's, there's an extensive set. Um, take your time reviewing them. Some of them are not free. Some of them are really modern, like the Mach 3 2010. Very cool. Um, again, depending on your taste, they even have some that are specific to types of machines. They do have uh, some bilingual ones for my international clients. Just depends on what you're looking for. But uh, in this particular instance, to support our fifth and sixth axis, we're going to go with the six axis screen set, and it is free. So once you find it, you're going to download it. We'll exit now out of mock. And now what we're going to do is once we've downloaded it, which I've already taken the liberty to do, and it's on my desktop, you can see it's a zip file. Now, once I open that zip file, now for those of you that are running Windows XP-based systems, you will have to install WinZip in order to make sure you have uh, the means necessary to open up and have access to these files. Now, it used to be free to install a trial version, and that's all typically you require. I don't know if it still is. If you're running a later operating system like Windows 7 through 10, uh, it's usually integrated in a trial version that you can install once again. If you want to buy it, you can buy it. You can see right here it's asking me to do that. In my in my instance, I don't use it that much, so I don't buy it. Um, but overall, here it is giving me access to the two files that I require. So I'm going to click on Extract To. And I particularly like to extract to my desktop. You select whatever file you like. It's completely arbitrary. And I click OK. And once that's done, we can exit out of here. Now, I've got the two files I require, 6axis.set, ut button slash jpg. Now what I'm going to do is go back into my Mach 3 uh, mil allocation. OK, and now we're back in here. And now all we're going to want to do is we're going to come over here to view. And you can see it says load screens. We can click on that. Now, once we click on that, we are now back into Mach 3's default installation folder. And you can see all of the little subfolders that are inside here that get installed with Mach 3. What we want to do is go to our desktop, because that's where those two files are. We're going to select the first file that comes up, which is ut button slash jpg. Right click on copy. And then we're going to go to this PC. And I'm going to scroll down to the, my hard drive, which is my C drive. And that's where Mach 3's default file has been installed. Now that we know we're there, we're going to go to bitmaps. And under mill bitmaps, I'm going to go inside, right click, and paste this file. And that's done. And now we're going to click cancel. And now we're going to go back into view, load screens, same process. Go back to desktop, scroll down, find that secondary file, copy. And then we go to this PC, scroll down. Once again, hard drive, where Mach 3 is. And this file doesn't go in, a, in an allocated subfolder. It actually gets just dropped right in, just paste it. And it's interesting because you can see where I placed it. 
and that's irrelevant. But what is relevant is you could see 102.4 dot set. That's your default screen set. Underneath that is a plasma screen set. So for my plasma guys out there, you may not even realize you have a plasma screen set in mock. You can click on it and test it out if you like. Some guys like using that. It's totally up to you. And then again, here's our six axis set. So in order to go to the six axis set, I'm just going to double click on it. And she's loading right now. And welcome to our six axis screen set. Now, I recommend highly you guys getting acquainted with this. If you're going to use it, it is pretty cool. It's very, very detailed. There's um, a lot of uh, different button locations and uh, actually some added buttons as well. You can see under settings, uh, whoever the person was or end user that actually uh, enveloped this actual uh, screen set, obviously was working on motors and a lot of things to support that. So offsets, they had a gauge block height. The tool path, again, really cool setup. Um, MIDI, not too much, not too different, basically the same. Um, program run. And again, we do have now our B and C axis or our fifth and sixth axis allocated. Now, one of the biggest questions that comes up is what if I don't want to use this screen set all the time? Well, there's no problem with that. We just click on view, go to our load screens, and just cycle down. You can see now it's placed it right near the other screen sets. There's six axis. And you would just click on the default one, which is 1024. If I double click on it, you're right back into your default screen set. So if you wanted to go between, let's say, a four axis system and a five axis system or a six axis system, you just click on load screens, come back down, go to six axis, and you're golden. Now what we want to do is we have to allocate a hotkey or program in a key on the keyboard, which is the term for hotkey, that we want to use to jog our fifth and sixth axis. Many of you have come to terms with the fact that when you, even the fourth axis for that matter, when you come into these screen sets or you go into mock and you want to use your fourth, fifth, or sixth axis, you're wondering why you don't have a jog key. Well, you want to come over to config. We're going to come over to system hotkeys. And now you can see, and what's interesting, here's your fourth axis. It says 999999, and fifth I have at zero, and six nine 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 nine. Um, again, you have plus, minus, that represents positive motion, negative motion. And again, we have that for the fourth, fifth, and sixth. So it's regardless of which axis we want to program, it's completely arbitrary. In this case, I'm discussing the fifth and sixth axis, so all you do is click on that box. If I, for instance, wanted to program uh, V negative motion on my fifth axis to enter key, just press it, and you can see it allocated um, number 13 to that, which represents the enter key on the keyboard. Now, if I want to zero that out, all I have to do is come up to this box at the top right corner and just click on it where it says close, and you'll see a zero. OK, so again, these ones that are the same obviously are not activated. Even if you activate your port and pins correctly in mock, if these are all the same, you will not have the jog ability. So again, allocating these is a must. Take your time. Once you do allocate uh, what keys you would like to program for your fifth and sixth axis, your system is all set. You're ready to go. So again, I hope this video has been helpful, guys. If you do requ require any type of support or quotes, please message me at storm2313 at gmail.com. You can also message me direct at eDealersDirect. That is my eDealer e uh, store on eBay. Um, again, I am very busy. Please understand that I mean no disrespect to anybody. If you have to contact me more than once, uh, again, just send me a, a contact email the next day. Uh, for the most time, I am actually getting in touch with people within 24 hours, actually typically within 12. I try to. So again, please be understanding of that. To all my subscribers, I really, really appreciate the support. I love you guys. I'm going to keep the videos coming. I hope this helps many of you. Um, I know everybody has uh, been looking at more and more of these fifth and sixth axis options because, again, uh, the technology is dropping in price. The only caveat to that would be the software. But um, for those of you that require fifth or sixth axis systems, this is an eye-opening experience because Mock does support it. And now that you see the different screen sets available, hopefully you guys will test them out and see which one really fits you and your applications. So, again, thank you guys. Take care.